Okay, now we're getting to displacement and velocity graphs. Okay, before we just get right into that, let's just quickly remind ourselves about um, graphs. And there's two very important things, and that is the independent and the dependent variables. Independent, I am spelling it wrong, independent and dependent variables. Okay, so just um, the independent variable is the variable that is not affected by the other variables. And that's, for example, time. Okay, time, it doesn't matter at what uh, displacement. Time just goes on in its normal way. So time is always independent. The dependent variables is the displacement and the velocity. And why they are the de de dependent variables is because at different times, we have different displacements. So if I travel some route, doesn't matter what route, okay, at different times, like there at that time, this will be my displacement, okay? At another time, that will be my displacement, okay? So we see that displacement depends on how much time has elapsed. So that's why that is independent. Now why that is important is that tells us where it comes on the axis. So when we draw graphs we have our vertical and our horizontal axis and on, on our horizontal axis we always plot our independent variable in this case t. If we look at displacement that's the graph we're going to look at first that means on the dependent variable axis we will have displacement. On here, we will have displacement. So let me draw you a random displacement versus uh, time graph. Okay, so let's say it's doing this, and then it's doing that, and then it's doing this, and then it's doing that. Okay. There we go. What is happening at different times on this graph? Now, as you can see, as time goes by, let's say we're at this time, okay? Now, if I go and read off my displacement, I go up to my graph and I go read off here. Let's say this value is five. That means that the displacement after, let's say two seconds is five meters, okay? Usually we will show here that it's in M and in S. Okay, it might be in kilometers and in hours as well. Okay, so this is displacement after five. So let's say after here, there we're at 12. Okay, here we're at 13. Okay, there we're at 13. Okay, here we're at two. Okay, there we're at two, for example. Okay, this is just random example just to explain to you more or less what is happening here well the one thing I want you to notice um, right off the bat is between this point and this point the displacement stays at 13 so whatever this time is and that time the displacement stays at 13 so what is happening at this time well it's standing still its displacement is not changing. That means it's standing still. Okay. It's not moving. Okay. But what is happening here? Well, if you notice just this straight line right here, we notice that if displacement at that point is, let's say that's 7, then displacement at that point, let's say that's 9, and displacement at that point let's say that's 11 okay here you see it's increasing and it's increasing with the same steps every time okay what this part means is that when it's a straight line and it's upwards it obviously means it's increasing because it's going upwards it's steeping upwards and it's upwards with the same steps so here it's traveling at a constant velocity okay so it's at a constant velocity because it's changing its displacement constantly. Here it's going to be 
also a constant velocity but this time in the opposite direction because in the end right here at the end look the displacement is zero that means it's back where it started so here it's traveling at a constant velocity away from where it started because displacement is increasing so it means it's moving away and here displacement is decreasing okay because it's a negative slope it's decreasing which means in the end it is going to come back where it started okay and because the slope is constant that means the velocity is constant so what's happening here well here we see a strange thing it actually has this curved shape so initially the velocity is um, not the velocity the displacement changes only a little bit over a short gap but if I take another gap of that same size I see ooh, now displacement is more so first displacement is small then it is a little bit bigger then it's a little bit bigger what is happening okay if that is one second and that is another second and that is another second it means it's speeding up okay it's moving away from where it started but faster and faster okay that means it's accelerating okay and we'll get to acceleration a little bit more later on for now let's just look at the basics if we have our displacement okay and wherever we are let's say that's our displacement uh, graph that's displacement and that's time okay what you'll notice is whatever I'm reading off at this time let's call that time zero okay that is my displacement zero okay at a later time I have another reading and that reading we'll call time two and therefore it's the displacement two Uh, well, let's call it one time one and displacement one okay so what do we have well here we now have a difference how wide is this this difference or if I were to draw a triangle here okay what would be the length of this side okay this side will be equal to x1 minus x0 so displacement at time one minus displacement at time it's not sorry let me leave out delta it's just x okay displacement at time one minus displacement at time zero okay that gives me the change in x okay that is change in x okay and here this distance is t1 minus t0 so this is t1 minus t0 and that gives me the change in t now the slope of this graph or what we know as the gradient m of a straight line okay you know from maths about the gradient the gradient is the change of y in other words the change of the dependent variable divided by the change of the independent variable so the gradient is the change of the dependent divided by the change of the independent variable okay and that we know is the velocity change of x over change of t that's velocity is change of x over change of t and that's something that we learn from the displacement graph that the gradient the slope of the displacement graph tells me about the velocity it's traveling at so if we go back here when the slope was flat it was standing still that means velocity is zero so the slope is zero when the slope is uphill okay it tells me the velocity is constant okay and the velocity is positive in this case velocity is positive in other words it's moving away from where it started okay when velocity or the slope is negative downhill velocity is negative okay that means it's moving towards where it started
okay and when it is this changing slope in other words here you can see when something has this shape it's the the, the gradient is first flat then it becomes a little bit bigger and then it's even a little bit steeper do you see how the slope is increasing it's getting steeper and steeper so for example a person walking on this slope will start struggling really very hard when they get to this point okay because the slope is increasing that means it's increasing in velocity first velocity is not much but it's increasing in velocity that's obvious, obviously acceleration. Okay, there's our displacement graph. In the next video, we'll look briefly at the velocity graph.